That's fantastic. OK, well, uh, if it's OK, I will take over for our final session of our trio. Um, and I realised earlier I didn't really introduce who on earth I was. Um, so thank you. Um, I hope I'm really great to sit, hit, uh, see and hear all your comments and, and feedback so far. Um, I know a couple of people have had to, to leave us, but um, hopefully they'll get the recording, um, but also um, are able to kind of give us feedback and um, provide their ideas and, and solutions, et cetera, in the feedback survey that I'll mention at the end. So in terms of um, sort of moving on uh, to talk about the, the final aspect for today's session, and we'd love to hear ideas about what you'd like to see and if you'd like to have any more remote forensic CSI sessions and whether you'd even like to actually deliver some. Um, so we're going to look and, and focus on uh, court based assessment. So I'm Dr Rachel Bolton King. I'm an associate professor uh, of forensic science at Staffordshire University. I'm based in the School of Law, Policing and Forensics and my subject specialism is actually um, around shooting into con shooting incident reconstruction, um, firearm identification and three dimensional imaging. But generally um, I teach right from level four, a lot of level four. Um, so that's first years for anyone outside the UK. Um, so they're undergraduate students. Um, and I really try and focus on supporting the um, transition of students from college or um, prior education FE into uh, higher education and universities. Um, and so whilst I don't necessarily uh, do a lot of the, the court based and the expert witness based um, teaching uh, within our courses, Actually, I am involved in the, the court based assessments and also um, I'm a real advocate for um, teaching in real spaces. And so uh, this has been like a really interesting experience for me to to have a think about how we can actually deliver this online. And actually, we uh, we had a, a go at, at doing some of these things. So I'd like to, to share that with you today. Um, so there are a range of sessions that have been affected um, obviously by not being in the actual uh, on campus and in these real world um, learning environments and so um, I, I, I'll share with you um, which sessions uh, we do and um, how we've turned some of them already into um, virtual court sessions um, and some of the reflections following those events. And then really sharing some ideas around uh, how and what you might be able to to achieve and utilize that's actually available um, already uh, through the Internet, as well as creating ideas for yourselves. And then obviously, as the format has been um, some Q&A. So um, looking at uh, our context at Staffordshire University um, and you know as Leisha and as Ian have been talking about you know we're taking on very similar approaches in terms of our crime scene um, delivery and our lab delivery um, and likewise they're going to be utilizing some of the experiences that that I share with you around the court-based sessions. So uh, we have court based sessions throughout our undergraduate and our postgraduate um, taught programmes and this involves a whole range of different activities, including looking at um, like staff and the law students actually um, putting on mock trials uh, for the students actually in their welcome week. And they typically come in and they used to sit in the public gallery. So um, the court that you can see in front of you is actually um, a, a, a traditional old crown court that we had access to up in Hanley. We've had access to this place for absolutely years. And unfortunately, we, we don't think we're going to get access to this anymore um, because they believe they're selling the building. And so um, I'm really trying to think about how we actually preserve this amazing experience, this beautiful room um, and actually utilise it uh, continually in the future as well. Um, so in Welcome Week, we would get all of our new students from the whole school. So law, policing, forensics, criminologists, psychologists, um, and sociologists would bring them in, uh, so forensic psychology, um, and we'd actually uh, allow them to see kind of us uh, create a 
representation of what a mock crime, uh, mock court might be for a criminal criminal trial. Um, we also um, get the students to come back the following a few weeks later um, and we actually go through with them um, actually all the roles uh, of each of the people um, working and who might be present in the courtroom. Um, we also get a couple of so Rachel, you're not, not sharing your slides. You're not sharing your slides. Oh, um, sorry about that. There we go. Can you see that now? Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so sorry about that. Um, let's see. How? OK, fantastic. You can still see them, Ian. Yep, yep. Excellent. Um, OK, so this is our, our old Crown Court. Um, and we'd also sort of get the students in uh, and give them the opportunity to act as the jury members, sit in the positions of the jury and sit in the positions inside the witness box, uh, dress up as the judge, um, act as clerk of the court, the ushers, um, as well as, you know, sit in the public gallery. Um, and we get a few of the students, those that were brave enough to volunteer in the first semester to actually uh, act out a little bit and gain some experience of what it might be to be an expert witness actually uh, and uh, evidence in present uh, just as a as a witness uh, or as a police officer and um, actually stand there and answer some questions and and hear what it might be like to um, be cross-examined uh, just on a you know their everyday life uh, for a few minutes and um, we also then sort of bring the uh, students back into the courtroom um, and give them kind of their mock and um, their practice uh, cross examinations um, and then we do that as well usually for our final year cro cross examinations both the undergraduate um, and then also in their postgraduate so um, we have a distance learning provision but they do have a, a solid month um, where they do all the practical skills um, in the summer on campus uh, and they actually also deliver so they write a court report and then um, present it um, uh, and, and do that cross examination. So we also have um, actually courts, uh, mock courtrooms on campus as well. So this is our one of our on campus courtrooms. And so we used to utilize both of those um, for, for different types of activities and different roles, um, which we're still looking to utilize uh, in terms of the ones that are on campus, um, but looking to utilize them now in, in, in different ways. So obviously that's what we try to do and we have been doing up until lockdown, um, but looking forward now towards um, how we do things next year um, but also like what did we actually do in lockdown because you know we were in lockdown and we couldn't get access to to the courtroom so we actually turned it into a virtual courtroom so we used teams and we uh, had a, a custom backdrop of a courtroom so you can see me there um, sort of as in our virtual courtroom and then on the left hand side you can see like a pencil sketch um, of how it actually looked uh, for the students, obviously not as a pencil sketch, but um, on a, their screen, they saw all of us, uh, the evidence in chief, they had the usher, and um, they had the defence for the cross examination, and then you had the student uh, as well. So I'll put it as a pencil sketch just so that the, uh, uh, the student can be anonymised. <laughs> um, and so they stood up, um, and they use their device, so laptop um, or smartphone, uh, tablet, whatever, um, and they dressed appropriately for court. Um, they uh, stood up, um, had the device slightly further away from them, and also were able to um, sort of do that live uh, cross examination. And the only real difference, obviously, other than being in that real courtroom and the scale of it and the sheer fear of walking into that 
um, that box was really that we didn't utilize the judge this time. Um, so normally we would have had a judge present um, where the student would have obviously faced and responded to the judge. Um, but we are looking to, to bring that back, obviously, um, moving forwards. But it was a whole range of different reasons that um, we tried to, to minimise it. And one of those was at the time, uh, teams didn't have the capability of having nine people visible on a screen. Um, so it was also quite limited um, in terms of who the students could see and, and who actually appeared on their screen as well. So we were just trying to make it a little bit more manageable for the student. So in terms of our reflections on how this kind of remote court assessment went, um, we really liked and, and um, colleagues mentioned students liked the fact that when they they uh, entered the, the virtual room, uh, they actually kind of felt like they were a little bit in a courtroom because it, our backdrops weren't, you know, the back of our houses and things like that. They still because it was live, they still felt they still were nervous. It was assessed. So that scary factor, that that nerves, they, they were all still there, but obviously probably not so much um, as when they would have walked into the courtroom itself. Um, in terms of the uh, their worries, I think they instead of them actually about standing in front of us um, all dressed as as barristers and um, actually being in the courtroom, their nerves were actually more around the devices and the technology that they were using and whether it would work on the day um, and, you know, whether there were any connection issues. But that was also um, felt for staff as well as for students. Um, and luckily, you know, the vast majority of these assessments went absolutely without a hitch. There were a couple of times where um, some of the students were kind of on their side um, for whatever reason, their device wasn't rotating their, their screen around, but it didn't matter. You know, we, we didn't mark them on that, but we did, you know, we kept marking them around, you know, their level of professionalism um, you know, how they dressed. Was it appropriate for court? Um, did they, you know, how they were answering the questions and, and summarising their information, etc. And so, you know, any of those worries around connection and, and devices were pretty much, um, you know, resolved and, and overcome. Um, you know, a couple of staff did have some some connection issues, but actually, when it came to the second, the moment that they were due to act as uh, and, and deliver their cross examination. Everything worked fine. Um, but if there was anyone that that really didn't that had any last minute issues and um, we were just really flexible in rescheduling them um, for a later time that day or, or the next day etc and I think really just having that understanding and that flexibility really helped the students um, to 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 succeed as well and I mean I think the overarching feedback from uh, courtroom uh, cross examinations has always been that uh, the students are really glad that it's over uh, and that um, it's been a really valuable learning lesson um, and experience for them um, and they actually do so much better than they think they're going to do. They, uh, they, they tend to feel like it's this really scary, horrible thing that they're probably going to fail when in reality it, it's usually completely the opposite and usually everybody passes, you know, as long as they can get through it, as long as they can um, you know, meet the criteria for the assessment um, and and usually people can do really, really well, which is which is fab. Um, so, you know, that was um, the, our experience prior to uh, today. Um, and actually, when I've been thinking about the, the remote courtrooms, it's been really actually important to think about because um, I thought I'd also share with you what was happening um, in England and Wales in particular about um, the real courts during lockdown in case you weren't, weren't aware. So in about March, obviously, when the UK went into lockdown, about half of our courts actually closed. Um, they stopped uh, any jury trials, um, as far as I'm aware, between March and May, and they turned their approach to delivering as many of the hearings as possible into remote hearings. Um, so the data that came out in April suggested that about 90 percent of the, the hearings had been able to be held remotely. Um, 
And that was nearly 3000 uh, hearings were happening um, in England and Wales each each day. And um, the portal they actually used to do this was um, provided by Kinley. It's called the, the Cloud Video Portal. Um, and there is a link. So when you get these these slides, if you click on the green link um, to the HMCTS webinar, um, you can actually hear all about um, this particular platform and how it's being used, etc. Um, but, you know, thinking about how we're moving forward and, you know, the the push to modernise um, our, our courts um, and further facilitate remote delivery and um, engage people from from distance. I think it's actually quite important that um, students and staff, you know, are able to actually deliver um, sessions remotely and gain it a lot of it is about gaining confidence in the technology you know and you've even seen today you know the first time we use something you know even we can play with it as much as possible you know beforehand and minimize the the problems but actually when we we come to deliver it live things can go wrong and just being confident enough to try and resolve um, any of those issues that we encounter and so being able to deliver um, live events, whatever they are, um, and engage with them as a participant or as a as a as a presenter is actually quite an important skill that I think, you know, actually needs to be further embedded within our courses, regardless of, of whether we all go back to on campus delivery or in person training or whatever we were doing before COVID occurred. Um, and so, you know, I think that this element of remote delivery and assessment and, and communication, um, particularly with using verbal um, with audio and, and video is really quite important because it might be that at some point you actually need to utilise a remote system in order to engage with um, a real case and, and real courtroom experience. Um, and so I think that is is a really good reason as well for actually further supporting the use of these online provision as we move forward. So in terms of um, you know because we you know as we mentioned with with labs we don't want to to move away from that in in class um, face to face uh, delivery but obviously we need to abide by social distancing and, and government guidelines etc. Um, but so we're looking to actually upgrade our our, our own uh, mock courts which are on campus so we're putting in um sort of audio visual um ability and capability to perform live stream um technology that can scan our courtrooms and and also and um, then project that onto walls of other rooms um, that we can utilize to expand the learning environment and um, particularly because we're having to make um, group sizes so much smaller and do many many repeats and and the space that we have on campus may not be um, sufficient to enable us to always be able to use um, our mock court rooms and um, we can turn other rooms into um, a suitable learning environment and um, we're looking at um, implementing a simulation and a case management system that's actually been designed and developed for the healthcare sector, um, so for use with, with patients, um, but we're actually getting that embedded and, and trying to use that in our, our law teaching as well as, uh, which we'll then utilise from a, a forensic provision as well. Other ideas that we've had around um, utilising uh, resources, and I'll, I'll, the next slide I'll, I'll um, mention some of those and I'll give you some links um, but you know with particularly with the old Crown Court that we're going to um, be losing potentially and um, we want to preserve it so we want to take videos of it we want to do 3D scans of it so that we can create interactive content for our students and use that in teaching and learning and also to support formative and maybe summative assessment as well so that's kind of like informal and more formal marked assessment um, also looking at streaming, mock trials, things like that. So in our welcome week, we're going to, as staff um, and a, a couple of the, the law staff or students, we'll, we will do our normal um, delivery, but we'll do it on our mock court on campus and then we will stream it um, to everybody rather than having them in the actual courtroom. 
Um, we'll also look at using real and dramatised court cases. So, um, for example, if, if anyone's seen um, during their, their annual leave, their staycation this summer, um, there's actually a programme called Murder, Mystery and My Family that's happening. Um, and this is where they actually go back to cases that were murder cases in the late 1800s. And they re they have a, a prosecution and defence barristers who re-examine the actual um, case and all the evidence, all the material, all the news articles that they can get about it. Um, they obviously, uh, there's the family that are brought in to, to go on the journey um, and they actually present um, the prosecution and defence perspective to determine whether the original um, outcome was uh, deemed, would be deemed still safe in with current uh, forensic standards um, and current current standards. And so it's actually quite an interesting um, sort of programme as well. Um, so that again, you know, that can use, be used to, to feed in. We always um, get our students to go to real court cases and sit in the public galleries to actually um, see it done live and to, to get real world perspective. And obviously now the public galleries are starting to open back up, which is really good. And the, the jury trials are starting to sit again. And so we'll be encouraging our undergraduate and postgraduate students to do that wherever they're based in the world. Um, if, there a, if there is a public court that they can go to to do that. Um, Trying to make it as interactive as, as possible, both uh, in live class and outside of class. Um, so things like creating like a wall, maybe using Padlet, um, allowing uh, students to actually share news articles of contemporary cases that are either going through the courts or sentences that have um, been recently uh, issued and using that to fuel discussions um, and tutorials or seminars and um, further enhance the learning experience and, and gain relevant and uh, useful content around what's happening um, uh, not only in criminal context but also in a court context as well. Um, use Box of Broadcasts if you have access and a subscription to that. Um, and that will give you, if you don't, if you've never used Box of Broadcasts, that allows you to basically uh, access pretty much, I, I don't think I've not found a particular TV uh, or um, recorded media um, documentary or, or whatever. You can just search for a particular topic and it will give you loads of, of things that's been recorded from, from and broadcast over television. Um, and use that to kind of uh, critique um, what, is real, what might have, um, how things might have changed from one point of time to another, ask live, do live tasks and quizzes, etc. But also when it comes to cross examinations, you know, um, get students, you know, ask questions, get students to record audio. Um, what would be their answer? Um, if they were asked this particular question in court and then um, sort of share that. And I know that um, some of the um, laboratories, forensic laboratories, particularly in South Africa, have this um, brilliant training programme. And part of that is actually, um, you know, creating questions that they often get asked during cross-examination and creating like a repository of answers that can be used as a training aid and um, to help facilitate their each other's understanding, particularly for, for new forensic practitioners who are going through training. And so um, in terms of like lots of the interactive and free online resources, you can have a look and peruse these in your own time. But there is perspectives from um, the witness side. So um, victim support have an interactive um, journey, which is the top one, the top picture you can see um, about what might happen as you go through the court process. And um, you've also got uh, YouTube where um, the live cases, uh, live court cases like the Oscar Pistorius trial were actually aired live um, and they're being shared still on YouTube. So there's a link to one of their examples, one of the sessions there. You can extract clips from that or you can, you know, get them to watch the entire thing, depending on what the purpose of the learning uh, is. And um, there's also um, it's a US based um, provision, but there's uh, scripted mock trials. So the download PDFs where you can, you know, adapt it, alter it for, for UK language or, or context um, and get students to kind of fill in. And they're based on um, fairy tales. So, for example, like uh, The Wizard of Oz, um, 
uh, also Alice in Wonderland, um, Cinderella, etc. Um, and there's a range of civil and criminal based uh, cases that you might be able to utilise in teaching and learning. There's really good um, material that's provided by, for example, like the CPS on YouTube um, about what it what it does and what happens in the courtroom and loads of um, 360 degree tours or virtual tours or interactive tours um, with different types of courtroom settings. So the middle picture is an interactive magistrates court from Australia um, and you can click on the different people and they talk and then you've got a pop up box that uh, tells you what their role is. Um, that you can utilise. Uh, and the bottom one, it allows you to see these 360 tours of the Supreme Court and the different courtrooms um, and the lobby area, etc. So you can also explore and move through those, those facilities as well. Um, and as a, a final resource, um, in case you're not aware of it, um, Research for Justice um, from a research context. So this um, international toolkit provides links to loads of different um, professional organisations and the open access research um, and articles and bulletins, etc., that are available from a whole range of different um, resources um, and, and online um, sites that you wouldn't necessarily find by just um, going through Science Direct or uh, the normal journal article channels. Um, and so you, that might be a, another useful resource that you have a look at and you can follow us on Twitter. And um, so hopefully that's given you kind of a, a Kickstarter of loads of different ideas um, that you might want to think about in a, in a court based context. Um, and so that kind of leads me into the, the Q&A session and, and um, anything that you've spoken about, any of us have spoken about today, you know, we'd be more than happy to, to discuss through email or chat afterwards. Um, and we'd really, really appreciate your, your survey for feedback and any ideas that you have around some future events, some topics, and um, there's a space for that within the survey. Um, and we're also wondering about what your thoughts might be, um, and this isn't necessarily to answer now, but again, it's asked in the survey around whether you'd like to be um, involved and invited into an online networking platform, which we host through MS Teams, that you could then share more ideas, continue these discussions, and we can then use that to, to host more events maybe. Um, so thank you very much for listening and apologies for not sharing my screens a bit earlier, but hopefully uh, you've got some questions that you might like uh, me to answer. And um, here's my contact details if, if you do want to get in touch after today's session. Hi Rachel, thanks for the excellent talk. I've, I've been looking at the questions. Um, there's been lots of good practice shared as, alongside the questions as well. Um, two Brilliant. questions in one here. Uh, one is around um, the scenes that the students examine before they take to court. Do they examine them themselves? And then linked to that, what is your learning outcome for taking students to court? What do you hope to, ch to achieve? Do you hope them to become expert witnesses? Yeah, OK, great. So um, in terms of um, prior to courtroom, yeah, absolutely. So very similar to um, how Ian mentioned earlier, we have a, a module in particular um, in our third year, so our final year undergraduate, but also as part of our postgraduate um, sort of practical course where the students um, are briefed, they go into the crime scene, they collect their evidence, then they go into the lab, they then analyse that evidence and then they write up their reports and then they are cross examined on them um, in that courtroom setting. Absolutely. Um, and then the, the second question, um, which was I've now forgotten. Sorry, Ian, can you remind me? Uh, so it's about um the learning outcome for the court experience yes so the learning outcomes for the court experience well it, it kind of depends what it which bit it is so um some of the earlier ones are obviously around kind of experiencing what it's like to be in there to kind of um so it's not as daunting when you first go into the courtroom and kind of building that confidence the awareness of of where people stand and and what people's roles are then in terms of the um the 
the final assessments, let's say, that's um, it depends on whether you're on our, one of our policing courses or whether you're on a forensic course as to whether it's a, a, an expert witness or um, whether you're providing um, evidence of fact. Um, and so again, yeah, the, the obviously we're not fully training them in how to be expert witnesses. Um, and there's loads of companies that do provide such training. Um, but it is giving them that experience of what it would be like. So we do expect them to be able to answer scientific questions. We expect them to um, give their answers to the appropriate people in the courtroom. Uh, expect them not to um, get into then not to be defensive and get into an argument. Make sure that they can um, deliver their their answers in a unbiased manner. Um, and that it's helping the court, i.e. The, you know, the role of an expert witness um, and that they can actually present and clearly articulate the, the knowledge that they have or the interpretations that they've made on their evidence itself. So there's quite a, a number of different learning objectives um, that we and, and expectations that we have that we would kind of assess against for those. But yeah, definitely to try and prepare them as best they can in a more safe environment than uh, for their first real court case. Um, a, lot, a lot of the other comments, uh, ideas and reinforcement of things you talked about, Rachel. Um, general theme is uh, seems to be about students just being able to go along to a normal proceedings unrelated mm -hmm. at all to their course and what they can gain from that. But a very specific question from Channey about do you teach polygraph? Uh, no, we don't actually. Um, so uh, but yeah, absolutely. We we encourage our students like in the first year they have to as part of the forensic investigation and policing criminal investigation students. They have to go to a courtroom um, a real court case. They have to sit in on it um, and it could be whatever case occurs on the day. Um, they have to then write up about their experience and, and what they've learned from that experience. Um, but then we encourage them to continually attend court and try and go to as many different types of case that they can to, to hear. Um, so, for example, I remember when I did uh, my degree um, at Nottingham Trent University, you know, I, I went to the coroner's court, went to um, magistrate's court, went to crown court, and was able to to hear those different perspectives um, in order to support my learning. It, it was actually really quite a hard experience as well, though, because, you know, particularly in the, the quite serious cases, murder cases, etc. You, you know, you're sitting there with members of the family and actually that experience of being in that public gallery with family members, with family members, you know, from both the victim and from the um, defendants, um, you know, both parties is quite an interesting and um, really valuable learning experience in itself. Um, and, you know, really, really understand then the etiquette of the courtroom and, and what you can and can't do, uh, even just entering the doors of the courtroom environment. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, if, if um, courts are still allowing public galleries and people to attend, you know, I, I'm always going to recommend that that students um, and also, you know, trainee practitioners will continue to do that. I think that's the uh, last question, Rachel, and uh, lots of people are saying thanks and a few people are having to start to leave now because we're running slightly over, over time. No, absolutely. So.